Do you think that the development of junior golfers nowadays is mainly dependent on the wealth of their parents as wealthier families are able to pay for better coaches whereas junior which may possess more natural talent than a child in a wealthier family will not be able to progress as far as their family can't pay for top coaches which I totally think is unfair but I suppose it's how the sport is going now. Uh, it's a good question. I would actually agree 100% with that. So what you'd have to understand though is that that hierarchy or status happens in every level of life. Uh, because of where I grew up in a, a wealthy city in San Diego, my dad being a business owner, um, I was able to be exposed to better information that created more value for myself. So if I were to have grown up in LA in Watts, which is a heavily crime, uh, heavy, heavy crime rate city for many years, uh, you know, a typical kid in that neighborhood, maybe his dad's in jail or is not there, his mom works two or three jobs, or is on drugs, you know, and all I have are my buddies who are all gang members, and there's no jobs available in that community for me, you're going to understand that I am given a better start in this world to some extent, you know, so this status, this hierarchy of the environment you were born into that none of us chose all separates ourselves in some way of better or worse. So I would agree with that. Out here, where I'm at right now, there's so many people who have uh, sponsors or wealthy parents to, to pay for everything for them so that all they have to worry about is playing golf every day. Uh, so that's absolutely huge. I'm, even my uh, high school buddy Blair, you know, he was shooting you know, under par in junior days and I think if he would have had the right resources since high school and the right money to be able to play in consistent tournaments to get a rhythm because uh, you know he was a good player just could never have the money to play in tournaments consistently and you need that experience so and he was one of the most talented golfers I had seen one of the best ball, ball strikers I had seen so if he had the right resources maybe since high school he could have already been on tour now but right now he's living in a shed still trying to make on the pro tour because you know money's just hard to come by no one wants to give you 25 50 100 K for a year just to go golf so 100% true and with that being said, I think since we know that, right, since we understand that, if you were given an environment that was less productive for results, you can't use that as, a, as, a, as an excuse, right? We know that now, so you have to understand everyone has better and worse. I have better than some, I have it worse than some. But because we know that now, it's up to us to figure out where we're at and keep moving up from we have no choice now we can't control that we can't control what we were given or not given and a lot of the times the so-called curses or being poor or having less resources if you can get through that ends up being a blessing because you come a, a more stronger person your character is more developed you're more disciplined you you can persevere harder things what is the best way to determine shaft flex and loft of clubs to help your game uh, you know, the best advice would be experience. You know, I've seen girls who don't swing hard at all who hit X shafts, and I've seen guys who hit the ball over 320 with stiff shafts. So, really, at the end of the day, you got to just get some clubs and try them out in the course and see how the, the launch and spin is. Because uh, even I've been with some pros where they hit clubs good on the range, and usually they have a different swing on the range than on the course, and, and the numbers are different on the course with the clubs. So, you really just have to experiment with different clubs and different shafts and figure out what feels comfortable and what works best on the course in experience. Any tips for junior golfers and what part of the game should juniors work on? Uh, like I said, you should really look at your own game personally and figure out where you need to improve specifically to you. But as this will be the telltale time, you can never work too much on short game. Short game, putting, uh, bunker shots, everything from 100 yards and in, that can save you so many strokes even if you aren't a good ball striker. And also mental game. Learn how to deal with in bad shots or, or, you know, being mentally tough and never giving up on a round, not beating yourself up is also a huge thing. Short game, mental game. Favorite player on that PGA, LPGA tour? Um, LPGA, I would say definitely Lexi Thompson. I don't know. I just think she interacts well with her fans. Uh, seems like a cool person from the outside in. So Lexi Thompson and maybe Gary Woodland for PGA Tour. Chicken or beef? I'm more of a beef type of guy. Short par three with a tricky pin placement or a short par four with thin fairways and hazards? I would say a short th par three with a tricky pin placement my myself. Uh, why did you take such a long break from YouTube? Uh, I think from 
January to November 13th. I only made one video and uh, I think I don't think I posted one thing on Facebook, uh, rec even recreationally, you know. I don't think I posted one thing on Instagram. I was pretty depressed. Uh, I was sick. Um, so physically I wasn't doing good, mentally I wasn't doing good. And when I'm not doing good, I usually keep uh, all my problems to myself. I don't share them with anybody and I kind of get very closed off and I just kind of crawl up into a, a mental ball and just hide in a corner, uh, just to be honest. So you have found that my videos throughout the years have been very sporadic because I'm a very, physically if I wasn't doing good, I get mentally doing bad. Uh, and then my mentally, I think mentally being sick is worse than being physically sick. So I'm a very person that can get very, I look at the glasses kind of half empty type of guy, very dwelling on the negative things. Um, so it just depends. I was doing bad physically. I always had real bad skin, uh, severe acne. So as you can see, I have scars all over my face. And for being a young guy and going through actually physic physical pain, and then mentally that was very hard on myself. And I just didn't, at a lot of point, I didn't think there was anything I can do. So that's the main reason. I was just physically bad, mentally bad. I was very depressed. Um, and maybe I'll talk about how I got through that in a later video. Why don't you test clubs for TaylorMade anymore? So a lot of people always ask me over the years uh, how I got testing clubs for TaylorMade. TaylorMade does club testing down in San Diego. They only have about 10 guys do it a day. It's kind of a just a small group of guys. Basically, my buddy used to test clubs for them, and they were looking for somebody else. So he referred me, and I got in, and I did it for about three and a half years, which really helped me out with getting clubs. So instead of them paying me in money, they would pay me in points, and with the points I could order clubs, clothes, gear. So I do a lot of my giveaways that have all my clothes, all my clubs. So they've helped me out a tremendous amount. And I just have always loved the people who work at TaylorMade. They've been very generous and nice to me. So it only does, they only do in San Diego. They only test clubs in San Diego. So now that I'm in Arizona, I obviously can't do any testing for them. What is your ultimate goal in golf except becoming the greatest player ever? Well, obviously my goal is not to become the greatest player ever. Uh, my ultimate goal in golf is I really don't have too many goals. Uh, my goal is just to keep getting better and see where that takes me. You know, there's a lot of things in life we can't control. We can control our attitude. We can control what we do every day. Uh, whether what we do is right or wrong, you know, we don't know. We just do our best. Um, sometimes we go down and sometimes we go up. So a lot of it for me is a learning process and growing. I don't really, like I said, I, I'm not a big projection guy of saying I'm going to do this or do that. I'm just going to try to become the best I can be and see where that takes me. Did you go to college? Like I said, no, I didn't. Uh, my dad, you know, being an entrepreneur, he never pushed school on me. I didn't under even really understand college when I was in high school. Uh, my brother, who didn't go to college as well, you know, and he ended up making, I think, like 60 to 70 grand uh, when he was 17, 18, just graduating high school doing internet marketing. So you have to understand that the two male figures in my life never went to school. So. I always kind of had the back of my mind that I wouldn't. You're always going to go on, you're always going to go towards the direction of what you've been exposed to or what has been influenced you. You know, so many people were always telling me to go to school, and you know, and that's because they were taught to go to school. Well, I wasn't taught to go to school. I was always taught to, you know, grow your own business or do something by yourself to, you know, not work time for money, you know, work for yourself type of thing. So, just depends on who you've been influenced by and you know your parents your friends growing up I just was never pushed school my it wasn't a priority for for my for my dad or for anybody else so uh, st there's a difference between schooling and education my dad didn't want me to be a retard and be dumb but schooling's not necessary you do need to be educated though absolutely I and I love learning I love to study I love to learn who's your favorite rapper um, I don't really know favorite rapper to be honest. Maybe I don't know. What drove you to the next level and helped you succeed? Um, what drove me to the next level? Maybe, uh, maybe hitting rock bottom. I would say at, at a certain point in life, there's been two types of my two times in life where I've hit hit rock bottom, 
And that's where I've sprung up the highest from there because you're at your wits end. You're basically at a do or die situation mentally and physically sometimes. So, you know, at one point with my golf game, I was so fed up with how I was playing that I motivated me for knowledge and a, and, a, and a quench for understanding and information so I would never have to play this bad again. Same thing with life. I mean, I don't want to dive too deep into it, but I was just so fed up with life. I said, you know, I don't want to get too gnarly on you guys, but I'm like, if you're going to end your life, that's cool, but just make sure you did everything you could to get better. Like, you know, so I was like, give it your 110% for a year or two, and if things don't get better, then you can do what you whatever you want to do. But so hitting rock bottom, it's basically you're done. Your last resorts are given up, and you have no other option either to go up or you're done. So what drove me to the next level, hitting rock bottom? If you could be sponsored by a company, which one would it be? And what tournament would you want to get a sponsor's exemption into? Uh, companies, you know, honestly, I don't self-identify or label myself as a tailor-made guy. Uh, like I said, I did test clubs and they've helped me out so much that that's why I play their stuff. They've been very good to me, but I'm like by no means a tailor-made guy and I'm only strictly their stuff. I hit uh, exotic woods I like. I've hit a Callaway 3 wood I hit, I hit just recently I liked. Um, so maybe that's the type of guy I would be. I wouldn't want to be any company. Uh, I, I just want the best of the best. But maybe for that, if I had to answer, maybe TaylorMade because I think overall they have a, I think overall I like their stuff the most. Thanks for watching my video, you guys. If you guys want to be part of the movement towards improvement, make sure to check out the links down below in the description box. They got t-shirts, hoodies, long sleeves, collar shirts coming, ball markers, all with the movement towards improvement on there. Always to keep you guys reminded that the goal is to always constantly improve. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I do monthly golf giveaways for my subscribers and Facebook followers. And for any type of business inquiries or online lessons, check out GabrielRider.com. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you soon.